to the epicenter of sports and entertainment. Sure. This is the Rude Dog Come on in. The water's one fine. Your host, Rudy Reyes. Oh, the betting line is fine. Depends on uh, if your glass is half full or half empty. Speaking of half empty, weather's about done in some parts of the world. But whether or not things work the way they should, well, I guess we're on to the right. And not the left. This is Rudy Reyes on the Rude Dog Show. Mm-hmm. And welcome John Ryan to the show. John, man, hey, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. What's going on in your neck of the woods? Well, we're, we're having a little bit of electricity in the area with uh, the form of lightning, as you know. And uh, now we're, uh, I think we're good to go. And, you know, God willing, um, <laughs> no more lightning strikes. And I think we'll be okay. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, I know Vegas has got backup power. So hopefully it doesn't affect their line either. Uh, speaking of lines, <laughs> there was yeah. a, a, a few lines, a headlines, actually not betting lines, but headlines, uh, over the, over the weekend, just a day or so ago, uh, Travis Denard, uh, homered had four hits as the Braves and the wet, the Reds winning streak, trying to say that 10 times fast. And it wasn't even as if the Reds weren't in any type of competitive mode. Cause they were, they only lost by one run, but again, a loss is lost. A win can be big. And, of course, when we talk about the betting aspect of it, it was huge for Atlanta to get this win. Anybody who bet on Atlanta certainly doubled down and was able to uh, put some maybe some parlay action in regards to that game, maybe from the onset or maybe halfway through, or maybe in the seventh inning stretch, stretching that dollar, uh, the almighty dollar, if you will. Uh, But the Snap the Reds 12-game winning streak. And it wasn't as if it was for the faint-hearted, it was for those that went into this game thinking, well, you know, the Reds, yeah, they're just the Reds. No, they're not just the Reds. The Reds are on fire. That's how hot the red is right now. We're talking Jupiter kind of action when you talk about red. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the Braves themselves decided to knock the Reds back down to earth. And when I think about betting lines and the lines they're in, uh, what were the odds of any kind that the Reds would see a 12 game winning streak snapped. And then what is the line of them maybe win the NL central? Well, it's a, that's a great uh, topic, Rudy, because there, there was a little team called the Oakland A's in 2002 uh, that they made a movie out of called Moneyball. And I remember that season quite well because they, when they got to the 12th win, guess who started to fade them? And guess who was dead wrong for three games in a row? And then I kind of slapped myself in the face and thought, you know what? You got to let's see what happens with this, because this is uncharted territory and who knows? And uh, as, as we know from that season, Oakland started out terribly bad. They were trying money ball for the first time. They made a tremendous amount of trades that they were throwing away the season. And then the winning streak started. So it was very similar to this winning streak for Cincinnati. As you said, Cincinnati has been not a good team for many, many years now. And it's been 2012 since they did win 10 games in a row. After that 10 game winning streak, they lost a game, but then went on a five game winning streak. After that, Rudy, they played five games over 500 the rest of the way, which was about 72 games. And uh, they won the National League Central Division. They went on to lose to the San Francisco Giants in 2012 um, in five games. That's when they had the five-game series. Um, And the Giants went on to the LCS. But I do think in this rather weak division this year, um, the Cubs are the only team right now that are outscoring their opponents. So they have to be on the radar as well. But given the history of what teams do when they've had a 10-game winning streak, um, they, they normally make the playoffs. The, the Braves were on an eight-game winning streak before the Phillies cut them down. Um, and then they cut down the Phillies' uh, win streak, too. So there's a lot of hot teams in the, uh, in the National League right now. And uh, the Phillies had two six-game winning streaks in the same month, being June. And let's not forget the 1927 Murderers Row Yankees, considered by many to be the best team ever, only won, I think it was seven games, Rudy, or it might have been nine. It definitely was not double digits. Mm -hmm. So even back then, when they didn't really have the parity that we have now, it was very tough to win 10 games in a row at the Major League Baseball level. Uh, But I think Cincinnati will be okay. I would encourage people not to think that they are the Reds of old. 
because look at those four rookies that they have. I mean, it's nuts. Those guys are all of a sudden, you know, brought to the majors and they're contributing in a big way. And I, I would not fade them with a 10 foot pole. No. And there's no reason why anybody should so to, to add to that context. When we look at their longest winning streaks, at least in reds history, they went on to win 14 games from July 26th to August 12th of 1899. Yes, baseball has been around mm -hmm. a long time. For those that don't know <laughs> or not aware, yeah. maybe listen to this for the very first time. 13 games from June 5th to the 19th in 1890, uh, and which was nine years earlier. And then you can even go back to 1939 when they also had a 12-game winning streak in a row. So their longest winning streak of 14 wasn't going to be quite reached due to the loss against the Braves uh recently but before that it was since 1899 have they been on a roll uh when we put some more context to that uh the last i don't know best player for the reds in my opinion was well johnny bench um but even then even then not a very good reds team he was a highlight real uh obviously you know a uh, first batter in the rotation on many accounts during the regular season uh and it's just it's just really interesting how the Reds, I didn't see them coming out of absolutely nowhere, to be perfectly honest with you. I, yeah. they, they came out of left field, literally left field. A lot of teams had faltered, uh, including the Pirates, the Brewers, uh, and the St. Louis Cardinals still had not, and even now, as I'm speaking, still have not righted the ship of getting back to a 500 playable type of game. Of course, we have the All-Star game coming up. Uh, a little a little ahead of that, but still uh, always looking at trying to improve where the Reds are lacking from a pitching perspective, because you look at Luke Weaver, he's pitched, you know, three and a third innings. He's allowed seven hits, five runs, uh, five earned runs. I mean, the, he's he's good. But when you look at the trade deadline prior to all star, they need they need pitching and, and they need it fast. Right, because your first line of defense is a guy on the mound. You can't have a baseball uh, a, a star pitcher giving up five or six home runs in any given game. Otherwise, it's going to be a long, miserable outing for night innings. Wondering what the heck just happened and what did we get hit with, which were bombs uh, for home runs that happened against the Braves. So pitching is good, but I can't really. The last player. And, and forgive me, Joey Votto, as much as I've never been a fan of Joey Votto, regardless of who he's played for, he may be one of the oldest guys on the roster, the active roster for the Reds, but the guy has wheels and he's fast and he knows how to get around, basically around the, around the diamond on a regular basis. And just, I mean, he's got wheels, red hot wheels, no pun intended on, on the red, but He's been doing absolutely fantastic things. He's coming off of, from a shoulder injury last season. Uh, a guy that you look at is doing something even better this year, and he's put it on display. He's putting it all out on the field. So this is not for the faint-hearted. No one should really count out the Reds at all. Um, what is the line of them winning the NL Central? Is it high? Is it low? Should anybody add some serious money to that, or they're just throwing it away? I In the AL Central or the National League Central? Oh, excuse me, the, the, the NL Central. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure, but the, uh, I think the Reds are the team to beat. I really do. And all your points are correct about the pitching. I, I do think that the, the youthful movement that has obviously worked starting with Cruz, um, you know, you've mentioned um, historic players for the Reds. The one that comes to my mind is Eric Davis. And the only reason I mention him is that Cruz, when he was called up, what is it? 17 games ago. He asked permission to wear 44, and Eric Davis was the guy who wore 44. Mm -hmm. Eric Davis obviously approved that request, and what happens? Cruz hits for the cycle in his 15th game as a major league baseball player. You know that's the stuff you you know you just can't make up, and it it is kind of a fairy tale right now. Um, I believe it was early. It was April 17th. The Reds set a franchise low attendance record. Mm -hmm. It was a little over 7,000 fans in attendance. Brutal. Just as past, I think it was past Friday, that was the first time they had a sellout and they sold out the whole weekend. Right. And you've never seen a meteoric rise like this in popularity of the fan base coming to support the team than what the Reds are doing right now. And if they continue to sell out, 
We know from the other franchises that consistently sell out that Dodgers are the perennial sellout for their home games. And the, the Phillies this year are selling out every Audrey. single home game. And we saw what happened with that sellout crowd yesterday with the Mets. You know, we were talking before we went on the air. I, I was listening to it while I was driving through a torrential downpour thunderstorm. And, uh, you know, you, another thing you just can't make up, eighth inning. In Major League Baseball, you have a three-run lead, six to three, and you allow that home team to score four runs, Rudy, on one hit. And, you know, it was good that it took my mind off the weather I was driving through. It was like, I couldn't imagine what was <laughs> – yeah. like the stadium was going wild. You could almost hear it through the, the, through the radio. Sure. So, sure. Um, you know, those are the things that you can't predict, and but you do track. You know, teams that have – had leads and then lost the game. You know, sure. Oakland obviously is a big one there, but there's other big franchises that are on that list. And uh, the Reds are not one of them. So the Reds are a team that's very resilient. And, you know, if the starting pitching, like you said, is it, it's overall, it's not enough to make to the NLCS in any given year, but this seems to be one of those years that we could see a lot of magical events happen that we're not expecting. Sure. No. Do you know what? I would hate to think that the Reds are going to fall to earth in some way, shape or form. And people are going to wonder, well, is this just a fluke? Is this, is this fairy tale over? Is Cinderella going to lose her slipper? I mean, what's, what's really going on? Are they going to continue this win streak? So as far as the odds of them and the actual betting line, where is, where, where do the Reds sit? Are, are they the favorites to win the NL Central if so? What are P, what does the line look like right now? They are right now. I'm just going to pull up the current lines right now from Bet MGM, which is the, the place that I do like best. But I, I do have uh, several outlets to bet at, which is advice for the, the person out there that's just starting. You want to you know try, even if you have 100 bucks in there and you're betting pizza money on these games just to learn, that's a really smart way to go. But try to get the best line possible. Uh, but in the futures here, let me just pull it up real quick. We got um, – here we go. So out, we'll start with the outright winner. This is for the World Series. So um, the Braves are the favorite right now. Um, I just looked at the Yankees, but that's a topic for another day. <laughs> uh, you know, and the Mets is another topic for another day. But the sure. Reds are uh, pretty far down the list here at sixty-six to one to win the World Series. Okay, so that's six to one. Wow. I I wow. agree that you know, the market's kind of telling us that yeah, a this rough. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it's a it's um I mean I can't even call it a value bet. It, it's so high. That uh, what it's telling you, if they played the World Series 66 times this season, based on what the market is telling us, they would win it once. But if we move down to the National League Central, things are a lot different. Oh, sure. Because you're isolating, you know, teams that are playing within 500s of one another. So right. this is very and, and, and as I as I purposefully said that this this central, the NL Central itself is very tightly wound you're going to see this because there's going to be a lot more conjecture uh within uh not not only pre all-star pre-trade deadline but post all-star yeah. as well i see all these teams going down hot on the wire who ends up taking the nl central though well here's the betting odds milwaukee is the favorite at plus 130 i'm not surprised by that but the reds are still plus 250 which means you're getting you know, $250 in return for every $100 bet, which means if you put $100 in at the window, you're getting $350 back if they win the division. I think that's a pretty good bet, but not to um, get sidetracked here, but the Cardinals have, I have not figured them out. They, they are one of the you know, worst record teams in the National League. But let's not forget, they won, what was it, 17 games in the 2020 season in a row. Mm -hmm. And... Um, not that they're going to do that again, but on paper, this team is is better than the rest of the team teams in the division. Whether they can pull it off or not is a completely different story. I don't buy I mean, that at all. My gosh, they haven't done anything. Right. If you're okay, look, if you're a team playing below 500 
and you're consistently play below 500. You're playing teams that are over 500, let's say, right, as an example. Yep. And if you lose against those teams that are 500, you almost expected to lose those games because the teams you're playing have a better batting average. Um, they have more stolen bases. They have better bats and rotations better. The talent is better. There's so many moving parts to that. So for that line to be that, that low, I mean, look, I understand the Cardinals are fighters and they're bruisers. Um, you know, they certainly get things done and, and move things in a very, um, almost bewildering fashion. I think a lot of people are bewildered right now in regards to what's going on with the Cardinals. I, I, I don't, I just don't see them winning the NL central at all. I just don't. There's, there's and, too and I, missing. and I don't either. Uh, but it is like a traditional mathematically, if you would bet these type of situations over and over again, over the course of a season, over the course of three years, five years, right. it will work out for you. But on a, any given season, you do have to make the judgment call that, you know what, I'm getting paid an awful lot to take the Cardinals right now, but there's a lot of reasons why I'm getting paid a lot to take the Cardinals. <laughs> exactly. I think the shocker here is that the, the betting market has completely, you know, abandoned the pirates. It's 25 to one now. Well, and, and, and the reason I, 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 I tell you the reason for that, that's easy. They just keep losing. <laughs> well, I mean, it's true. They, they just keep losing. They were well above. They were at five, five thirty four, five thirty six, somewhere in the dark. Anyway, above five hundred prior to this what seven game losing streak, eight game losing streak. So the minute that the Cardinals got cold, the Reds got hot, which happens. Yeah. It happens within the the division because you're playing division foes and they're very familiar with you. They understand your rotation. They're very intelligent of a high baseball IQ. Uh, they're very methodical. They know what you're going to put in. I mean, it, it's, it's, well, it's like the NFL in the sense of you play your, your foe twice a year. If you're lucky or if you're not, depends on what side of the football you're on. Uh, unlucky to play them in postseason. And if you play them in postseason, then you, again, the odds are no better. Depends on the winning record, obviously, headed into postseason. But baseball is a completely different animal. Even though you're preparing for the yep. same familiar foe, you're playing for the same uh, the, the, the same goal is to beat that respective team out within your division in order to get a shot to win the division. And again, once the Pirates went cold, the Reds got hot, and now they're, they're red hot. And the Pirates just still have not figured out the pitching, which has been their biggest Achilles heel. They make the worst trades when they shouldn't. Ownership should know better than that. They've done this too many times and have gotten very little ROI on that. So as far as the Pirates, uh, what I, okay, so the question, the big question I have is this. What are the odds that the Pirates will even get to the World Series at their current winning percentage? Uh, probably zero. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, not to, not to uh, get the no, Pirates I, I, upset with me, but... No, um, it's perfectly okay. You know, it, it, it happens. If they have zero chance, or let's just say they're at point zero, then they're at point zero. Um, well, there's, the, the Reds there's, themselves... Um, have basically suffered along with their fans for many decades. And the fact alone that they need pitching, they can need a lot worse than just pitchers as part of the, uh, uh, as part of the trade deadline. Okay. Let's just be honest here. Yeah. Say, say they get some good pitchers. Maybe they find a guy in their farm system, their triple a affiliate or whatnot. Um, does that, I mean, Obviously, it increases their winning percentage. And again, winning percentages do have a lot to do with lines and betting lines and so on. Um, but but do the Reds get to, you know, not only win the NL Central, but maybe win the NL? What are the odds of that actually happening literally? Uh, well, it's 30 to 1. Um, okay. So that, that seems pretty reasonable to me. Yeah. And, it, and it is somewhat attractive because they are a, a team that, if they get that mojo going into the playoffs, much like the Phillies did last year, because they were a team that wasn't supposed to be there. But when they get that mojo going and the, you know, the locker room chemistry is off the charts. Good. You know, they teams like that play well, and you don't have to even figure out why uh, the NFL, especially when teams are getting along with, you know, the players are getting along in the locker room and there's some leadership. Uh, they're, you know, staying out of trouble, staying out of the media. Sure. Those are the teams you generally see in deep into the playoffs in the Super Bowl. You just look at it over, over the last couple of years in every single sport. Uh, I will say this, the Pirates are not 
the long shot of long shots to win the World Series or win the National League pennant. Then who is the longest? <laughs> well, who is the longest shot? Fortunately for them, there's two teams called the Colorado Rockies. Uh, they are 500 to one to win the National League uh, pennant. The Pirates, by the way, are 125 to one, and the Nationals are 500 to one, along the same price as the uh, oh my gosh. the Rockies. So. You know, you see these lines on the on the board, and and it, basically what that is telling you is that you know mathematically those odds should be more like ten thousand to one instead of five hundred to one. The, sure. you know, the books are smart, as you know, Rudy. They're not going to give you the actual odds, but realistically, the Rockies, National Pirates is zero. You know, it it really truly is zero at this point. Sure, sure, absolutely. But again, again, it has everything to do with with putting all the right players in the right positions, teams with rotations, with, you know, addition by, by subtraction. You know, there's a lot of moving parts in regards to, you know, and then it's still plenty of baseball left, right? This isn't, this isn't where they're going to head into postseason or head into October. Uh, we're only talking about the end of June into July, but, but time is running out. Time is of the essence for a lot of the teams yep. within the respective divisions in the AL and the NL to really right the ship and get these, get this going for their benefit. Uh, I don't really think teams look at betting lines, and if they do, they're probably betting, which is obviously against Major League Baseball rules, NFL rules, and ultimately any other uh, sports organizational rules that I can think of. And for those offenders that continue violating those rules, need to pay the penalty uh, and then wake up and realize maybe they just need to retire. They can place all the bets they want at that point. So true, and it's... uh... It is a rule that they need to enforce clearly because it it would it really would contaminate the quality of the product that's on the field in any sport. No, no doubt about it. Sure. No, absolutely right. Matter of fact, I was at uh, the Super Bowl in Arizona and I was talking to uh, a, a gentleman who headed the uh, sports uh, league that is working in conjunction with the NFL in order to um, kind of help bring a, a different um a different point of view, uh, different types of suggestions, different uh, types of strategies, uh, the way to keep people in line. I know they did a great job from a social media standpoint last season, as you've probably seen or witnessed on TV, to keep uh, keep pushing that, that button to let people know, look, just because you can bet doesn't mean that you need to keep betting, especially when you recognize that there's a problem. You know, you're selling your house, yep. you're selling your car. You're selling your, uh, you know, kids uh, toys in the black market, whatever the case might, might be. You just have to know when to say when. And if you notice that these habits are out of control, you need to stop. Call 1-800-GAMBLER. That's all there is to it. Right. Um, I so the NFL, agree more. Yeah, the NFL is doing a, a, a great job in, in that regard. Of course, others, people, uh, it's obviously very, very subjective, but uh, nonetheless, uh, John Ryan joins me here on the Rude Dog Show. I'm Rudy Reyes. We're here for just a little while longer. Uh, John, I wanted to talk about where where the Reds are and where they're actually going. And, and I don't mean necessarily from from just a, a playing standpoint, but from a personnel standpoint, uh, because they do have a youth movement. They do have a, a lot of young talent. Their farm system is now starting to kind of take shape and take form. We've seen that with the LA Dodgers. We've seen that with a handful of teams. Those are the ones, the creme de la creme of uh, farm teams that enable good, solid players, otherwise unknown, to get a chance at the big leagues and end up making the most out of the opportunity there. We've seen it with the Pirates, a 40-plus-year-old uh, guy in, um, I want to say, not not Bernard, but uh, a gentleman that got called up from AAA was 40-some years old. Uh, Bednar, excuse me, Bednar. Yep. That's what I knew I was on to something. So Bednar comes in and starts. And he, I don't know if he's still there, but I know that he starts. He did get the call up. But when you get a call up, that says a lot. It says a lot about your farm system. It says a lot about you as a player. Do the Reds have enough within the farm system? And 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 I still recognize that they have a youth boom and a lot to learn moving forward for this very, very young team. Um, but guys like Joey Votto, who has the presence uh, within the locker room, presence while they're in the dugout, presence of telling young guys, hey, you know what? This is where we start your swing. This is where we're at. Um, you know, try low, work high, double your weights. You know, if there's something you're not doing in the locker room, yep. I mean, 
what does the Cincinnati Reds farm system actually bring uh, in the long term to this Reds team to keep them maybe winning? Because, again, addition by subtraction for guys that don't play well, they get sent back. But the guys that do and show and exhibit it and are consistent, they get called up. Yeah, I think, you know, with the four guys they called up already, I think it would be a huge mistake to sell assets to get a veteran starting pitcher, for example, uh, to make a run at the World Series. Uh, you, I think it, the, the general managers, you know, in, in the whole entire league have that experience to know that for the Reds to really have a realistic shot at the Atlanta Braves in an NLCS matchup is probably a reach. So I, I think really, you know, if I'm a Reds fan, what I would want to see is them keep everything the same. Don't be buyers. Don't be sellers at the trade deadline. Keep everything the same. The assets are good. As you mentioned, the, the farm system is really coming together now. So why wreck that or disrupt that, those assets that are being developed um, to take a shot at something that isn't really all that realistic? Sure. However, if they do do that, then I think in, in three years, they might be the contender that, you know, takes down the Dodgers, for example, because uh, it seems like the Dodgers are there every year. And uh, not to get off track here, Rudy, but look at the Dodgers right now. They are, what, seven or eight games over 500, and everybody's wondering what's wrong with them. Well, look at the injuries. I have never seen a team that's had more significant injuries to a pitching staff than the, they're going through, and yet they're right there. So you can't – I mean, the Dodgers are a team that I'm pretty high on in the second half, and when they get healthy, I mean, look out the rest of the league. Uh, they, they actually could be the team that ends up taking down Atlanta and winning this thing. Um, but for the Reds to think that they could take down Atlanta, the Giants are playing extraordinarily well again. Uh, Arizona, I think, is going to hang in there, but I, I think there's too much between – even the Padres, I think, can make a run and possibly get a wild card. I would put the Padres ahead of the Reds. Uh, so I think if they win the division, I think that would be a major leap forward. And then they build from there. And like I said, you know, three years from now, be on track to get to the World Series and see what happens. They have, they have a load of talent and rookies and prospects. And to wreck that, I think, would be a huge mistake. Sure. No, and I, I believe the actual reach to acquire said talent, the, the guys that have been on the mound, you the, the ones that are extremely experienced, that have the time in, that have won multiple Cy Young awards, you know, or, or gold gloves, whatnot. Sometimes that could be the, the carrot at the end that you don't really want because you're not looking, you're not looking realistically. Right. You're looking at it with the glass half empty. And if yep. these guys are, are older and they've won those awards, well, that's great. But that necessarily mean they're going to do it for your team. And it's, it has to be about chemistry it has to be about, um, fluent movement uh, and age has a lot to do. Father time is undefeated. I don't care what league or what sport you play in. <laughs> Everybody's going to feel that pinch. It doesn't matter who you are or what you do. Yep. Um, so as far as where the Reds are concerned and where I see them moving is moving forward in a very positive direction, not just because they're in the national league, but uh, to, to your point about the Dodgers um, to, to continue develop, mental baseball within the triple a within the farm system that will gain much more and will pay more dividends literally and figuratively if you're a betting person on those games uh and, and of course futures for these guys um is is basically right in front of them it just depends on how they're able to perform on the mound as well as those that are in the outfield you know playing defense or uh batters that are hot prospects as well so you know th this is there's still plenty of baseball to be played. I'm not going to count the Reds out yet. That could change. But as of right now, I think the Reds are in still in contention. Um, yeah, the margins aren't there for betting lines and things of that nature. But that will all take shape. But again, as I said earlier, it's going to be indicative of what their records actually are, how they play in postseason. As they get towards postseason, what does that look like? What does a rotation look like? Where are they hitting at? What's the batting average? How many home runs? I mean, so many nuances of, <laughs> of where these teams actually lay is going to be a huge, huge difference between those that are wanting to bet and those that wouldn't take the bet, which is the difference in night and day. 
Uh, I can't agree more. And lastly, I'll just add this really about the Reds is that I've been uh, you know, talking about four rookies and crews and how great they are contributing now. Let's not forget that these guys have never played 162 games. Even if they were called up 15 games ago, they're looking at 150 games, which they have never played in consecutive fashion like the marathon of Major League Baseball is. And there is a concern about fatigue and experiencing that towards the end of the season. That could work against them. But then I think of guys like you mentioned, Joey Votto in the locker room right now, uh, you know, doing what he can as a leader to say, you know what, guys, we're doing great right now, but we're halfway done. We're at game number 81, and this is a 162-game season. So you better take care of yourself, stay out of the nightclubs, and just, you know, take care of yourself to be able to play every day at the best of your ability, and maybe we'll have some magic at the end of the year. And yeah. I think his value as a leader, I think, is immeasurable for that team right now. Sure. No, it definitely is. Veteran leadership goes a long way. And again, it doesn't matter what sport you're in for guys that are still able to play that are able to mentor that want to mentor uh, those that are younger uh, to give them the insight where they've been, how they've done it, uh, being a World Series winner, uh, just being able to really kind of give the uh, the old young mix kind of flavor going on in the dugout that the Reds are currently dealing with right now could be. If you're a Reds fan or you're a Reds player or manager, anybody who's a part of the Reds organization probably could not be any happier with the way this team is playing sure. as a unit, um, how, how they're playing um, as, you know, we're, we're losing or we're winning, but we're not losing individually and we're not winning individually. This is a team effort and everybody needs to put their, their hard hats on. And, and uh, to your point about working out, making sure that you're able to keep yourself up to par so by the time your name is called, your number is called, that you're the one out there making the difference and not being on the sidelines or in the dugout wondering, man, I'm injured. How could I have prevented this? Exactly. Well put. So with that being said, John Ryan, thanks, John. Appreciate you. Thanks for coming on. This is Rudy Reyes on the Rude Dog Show. Go to the RudeDogShow.com. Tons of interviews, almost 10 years worth. I'm going to celebrate a 10-year anniversary. You guys are going to love it. It's going to be fabulous. I'm concocting it as I'm talking about it right now. So make sure you go to the RudeDogShow.com. We'll have more uh, hints, tips, and tricks uh, coming up for the 10-year anniversary of the RudeDogShow.com. Story me, I'm Rudy Reyes. Thanks for joining, everybody. Have a great evening. John, we'll see you later. Thanks for coming on. Where can we any time, Rudy? Yeah, thank you. Where can everybody find your 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 great work and uh, all the other fun stuff you do? Well, at John Ryan Sports, and the number one is the Twitter feed. That's where I put out uh, free analytical info. Some of it's pretty deep, so if there's any questions, you just send me a message and I'll answer it. Uh, but my plan is to do quick kidding shows, two to three minutes, where I do take deep dives and start explaining some of these analytics and how they relate to being able to predict how a team's going to do not tonight but how they're going to do over the next week the next month and take advantage of those opportunities as well and then my infamous pizza bets where we're just taking you know five ten dollars and and having fun with it with player props and all sorts of other opportunities but with a goal to win not just throw it away exactly because nobody wants to throw good pizza away i know i don't <laughs> Especially uh, so, pepperoni on it. <laughs> yeah, put some extra cheese on that. It could be worse off than <laughs> at the end it. of the day. <laughs> Thanks, John. Yeah. I appreciate it. We'll talk soon. You got it. Thanks. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good, great night.